Live from Studio 3K in Rockefeller Plaza, you're watching Sports Final on NBC for New York. Here's your host, Bruce Beck. He played parts of 11 seasons in the big leagues and was a four-time All-Star at catcher. He was part of the Mets team that went to the National League Championship Series in 2006. These days, he's a talented broadcaster and a superb horse racing analyst. Friday, he will make his debut on Saratoga Live on MSG+. It's great to welcome Paul Aduka to Sports Final. Paul, how you doing? Thanks, Bruce. Thanks for having me. I'm doing great. Is it good to be back in New York? Well, it's always great to be back where you're from. You know, born and raised, or not born and raised, but born in Brooklyn. Um, and good to be back. Listen, I missed the pizza. I've already had pizza for the first three days I've been here. <laughs> I know you love racing. Where'd that love come from? Well, when I was a kid, you know, I always had a passion for uh, racing. My dad always took me to the racetrack, probably lied to my mother way too many times. God rest your soul, Mom. Um, but enjoyed it. Always had a passion for it. Obviously, a love of baseball, a passion for horse racing. Owned them while, uh, while I was playing and never really got to see any of my horses in the winter circle, which was weird. But I um, just always love the sport, and I think it has a lot of similarities to baseball. Baseball, your time with the Mets, <laughs> two very good years. You think about that ball club, went to the NLCS, a lot of characters, a lot of talent, Paul. Yeah, it's the best team I played for, the 2006 team, and it was one of those surreal moments when we lost in Game 7. Still rings uh, deeply in my heart and hurts a little bit, uh, definitely. And... You know, Bruce, a lot of people always ask what happened in Game 7 after Andy Chavez caught that ball. How could we lose that game? It was sort of the double mo. You know, after he caught that ball, I think a lot of people forget that we had the bases loaded and nobody out in the next inning and did not score. And I think the momentum went back to the Cardinals at that point. And we also lost that series in Game 2. We should have won Game 2. Let me take you back to the NLDS. Oh. Game 1. It was kind of a bizarre play where you actually tagged two guys out in the same play. Take us back, Paul. Well, everybody was always asked, is, do you remember the second guy coming or ever saw the guy? No. This is Sean Green to Jose Valentin right on the money. Now, when I tag out Jeff Kent, there's no way I'm seeing J.D. Drew. <laughs> and here's the thing. John Maine's yelling at me at that point. Uh, there had been a couple other people yelling at me. And Maine's even pointing. I did not see Anybody, I did not see anything. It was J.D. Drew just falling in my lap. So uh, a little bit of luck involved in, in a play that ended up being iconic considering I was, you know, grew up a Dodger. 297 with the Mets during those two seasons. Those were very productive years, as you mentioned. And I think the fans really enjoyed you. Did you enjoy them? Well, the fans here were, were great. And to grow up playing for a team that I loved, you got to understand, I was born here and then moved to Phoenix when I was a kid. So I was probably the lone kid that was jumping on his bed at 14 when the ball went through Buckner's leg. So it was a treat for me. And even though I played six, seven plus years with the Dodgers, I played two years with the Mets and it seems like the Mets fans treat me like I played here forever. Current Mets now in a situation where they can be buyers or sellers. You look at a guy like Jay Bruce. What do you think this ball club should do? Well, hey, uh, three years ago, I said they should have traded David Wright, and I got crucified. I thought people wanted to kill me, and David's one of my really good friends. Jay, I wish he would have hit like this in the last half of the season when we got him last year, uh, but he's having a monster 24, year. 24-62. Yes. He, he always, to me, always had that power. He went from a hitter's ballpark to a non-hitter's ballpark. I think he needed to make that adjustment with his swing. Still has the power to hit it out of any other. And, yes, any team is looking for left-handed power or left-handed bat. Are the, the Mets sellers? To be honest with you, I would be a seller. If I'm in front management, I'm a seller. I just To me, I think you need to go to that spot now um, if it has to be Jay Bruce and you let some of the younger guys start playing. What about David Wright? You spent some time with him. He's been a good friend of yours. Do you think we'll ever see him on a ball field again? It scares me. I've talked to multiple people about this. Um, great friend, Bruce. You hit the nail on the head. And here's a kid that was the face of the franchise. And here's the, the other, he still is the face of the franchise. And he has not suited up, honestly, in Only three years. Only 75 games in the last yes. three years. So you're wondering now, you have so much invested. Can he come back and can he produce? You know, is 70% of David Wright still good? I think it is. Um, just his leadership in the locker room, I think, will help a lot. I think a lot of that nonsense, if David 
what happened with Harvey and a lot of the other guys, if David was sitting in a better situation um, and playing every day, he would have had a bigger word in there. What do you think they'll do with the kid, Ahmed Rosario, who's got a world of talent and is only 21? Well, I think you, you bring him up if you do sell, right? Um, he's 21. Uh, dynamic shortstop. Dynamic. I mean, to me, a lot of people have gone away from the defensive uh, shortstops and the defensive, um, you know, outfielders. But if you look at this kid's numbers, not a lot of home runs, they'll start, you know, when you get to the big leagues, you, you start, your home run numbers will go up a little bit. What I do love is he's walked 40 times, Bruce, which I think is key. And the reason is he's 21. You know, they, you come out swinging when you're 21 when you want to get to the big league. So he's got a decent on-base percentage. That will rise. you got to understand the strike zone in AAA is a little bit bigger than it is in the big leagues. And when he starts hitting the leadoff, because I think, I think you thrust him right in the leadoff spot and go, here you go. Let's he could go, be kid. here for 10 to 15 uh, years. Yeah. Defensively, yes. His bat is starting to come around. You're hitting 321 in, 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 in AAA in the PCL. You're going to come down a little bit because it's a hitter's league. But to me, his on-base percentage is solid. Back to horse racing. We've been all <laughs> over the place with this interview, but you bring that kind of multidimensional nature to this show. Saratoga Live, yes. is there anything more idyllic than the spa in your mind? There really isn't. I mean, it's the best place in the world to watch horses. It's the number one place in the world. Uh, the best horses, the best jockeys, the best jockey colony by far. I know you've been there a couple times. Um, the Travers this year, the 26th of August, and right now is slated to have the Kentucky Derby winner of the Preakness and the Belmont all match up against each other. So, Listen, I'm excited. I'm excited to go to an iconic town where they have horse races that are 150 years old. And you're Think working about for that. Naira, too. Yes, and, and to, to work for a great company in Naira and to be back connected with my good friend Tony Alivado, uh, I'm just going to be more excited. Chris Kay, uh, the head of Naira, has opened arms uh, for me, and I'm excited to come back to New York. Visit us again. We can talk about anything, <laughs> Paul. And good luck to you. Thanks, Bruce. I appreciate it. I'm going to buy you a beer when you come to Saratoga. Sounds okay, good. Okay. That's Paul LaDuca, who Mets fans will remember fondly for his 2006 All-Star season. After nine years at TVG, he's now a part of NYRA. And you can catch his horse racing analysis starting this Friday from the spa where he will make his debut on Saratoga Live. We'll be right back.